I'm stunned. I mean, stunned again by the media's cowardice, its refusal to tell you what's really going on, particularly when it threatens your freedom, particularly when it involves Islam. Now, last night I told you about the stabbing of a Christian preacher, a convert from Islam called Hatun Taf, stabbed in the head and the arm as she was preaching at London Speaker's Corner, which is a place that's sort of, you know, symbolic of free speech in Britain. Now, she's very lucky to be alive. If you have, take a closer look at the attack, the attack is in the background of uh, this other video. It shows how incredibly violent it was. She's lucky one inch either way. She could have been dead. Now, a week ago, one week ago, it was huge news. It was huge news in Britain. It was huge news here around the world. When English footballers in their losing World Cup final were sent racist insults on the internet. Black footballers had missed penalty kicks. It was very ugly stuff. Mass coverage. But we are talking here of mere words, not a knife in the head. So I was amazed to see no report in newspapers here of this attack. If there were one or two, I might have missed them. I, well, I did miss them. Not on this attack on Hutton Tash and almost no reports even in Britain. The one BBC report that I have found does not mention her name, what she was doing or why she might have been attacked. The attacker, I should add, has not been found. So we're only speculating, really. But I don't think I'm speculating too much when I wonder why there is no interest in this attack. Because when you look closer, I think you'll understand exactly why not. Miss Tush is a born-again Christian. She preaches the gospel in this park. And that's already one big strike against her in the media, the anti-Christian media. I speak as a non-Christian. And she criticizes Islam at Speaker's Corner. Now, normally criticizing religion, like criticizing Christianity, that's long been seen as a legitimate expression of free speech, almost as an obligation by some people. And it should be legitimate free speech. And people who physically attacked those who did criticise Islam were once seen, well, they were seen as a problem. The people attacking, not the people preaching. And we reacted in proper horror when Muslim extremists killed 11 cartoonists and journalists at the Charlie Hebdo magazine for drawing cartoons of Islam. When France last year gave its highest honour to teacher Samuel Party when he was beheaded for showing one such cartoon to his class to teach him about free speech, that was applauded too. But in Britain, in much of the English-speaking world, it is now the critic of Islam who is the villain and who must shut up. Now, Hatun Tash, she knows this. She has preached peacefully at Speaker's Corner against Islam and for Christianity, and she's welcomed debate and has got plenty of it. And she has done this despite being menaced by groups of tough-looking Muslim men and despite being last year punched in the face by one of them. She's also done, th done this despite the fact that she's been the one being threatened and assaulted. Police have at least twice arrested and removed her from this park as the real problem here. Police even told the men menacing her that they weren't the problem, she was. She was here and causing trouble. There's one of her and 50 odd of you. So what we do is we take her from the situation. And that's what we've done. Appreciate that, man. All right. And now she's been stabbed. And even when she was stabbed and covered in blood, she refused to be cowed by the violence. Not as cowed as the Police are who have failed to protect her and the journalists are who refused to report on her assault or her words afterwards. Cutting people's arms, cutting people's arms is not going to help you. Muslim people, you know how much it hurts when you run away from Lord Jesus Christ? It's not about the blood on my hand. Joining me is someone who's written about this 
case, Mark Dury, an author, an Anglican minister, and an expert on the Quran, as well as a senior research fellow at the Arthur Jeffrey Centre for the Study of Islam at the Melbourne School of Theology. Mark, um, it's great to catch up with you again. Now, we do not know for sure if this latest attack on Hatun Tash was by a Muslim, but why has she been such a target of so much violence and intimidation? Why not just, you know, live and let speak? Well, she's absolutely fearless in, in challenging Islam and uh, preaching Christianity in that context. And there is a, um, there's a principle in Islam that you should shut down uh, opposition. You should, as it were, with your hand, stop someone from speaking. Not all Muslims are guided by that, but it's a strong uh, thread in Islamic thought that um, it's not enough to just win the argument. You should shut the person up as well. Is that actually in the Quran? Uh, it's a, it is, it's, it's complex. So the earlier part of the Quran says, you know, speak in a beautiful way and persuade people with the way you speak. But the latter part of the Quran basically says that anything that causes sedition or uh, undermines Islam is, is worse than killing and, and you need to fight, use, use force to put it down. And Muhammad said, but if there's something bad and all you can do is think against it, then think against it in your heart. If you can speak, speak. But if you can use your hand, you have to use your hand. So you, you use force if you can. Uh, it's, it's the uh, preferred option if it's available to you. And that, is, that, that would be the case in many Muslim countries. If someone was publicly criticising Islam, they would experience uh, violence uh, against them. Now, what does this whole incident tell you, not so much of Islam, but, but of our society? The, the, the refusal of the mainstream media to give this attack any real coverage. I mean, like I say, one inch, one side should be dead. Yeah, it was, a, I mean, my observation looking at the video, someone was trying to kill her or at the very least take her eye out. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not a forensic expert, but it seemed pretty aggressive and very strong blows aimed at her face. Um, there's been a whole history in the UK of police not um, being willing to engage with uh, Islam, Islamically motivated hatred. Um, um, there was the undercover mosque series uh, that was done a television program. And in fact, the police tried to prosecute the um, the television station instead of the, uh, the the Muslim clerics who were presented on those programs preaching hate. Um, there have been cases of, of uh, girls who've been um, sexually abused by mainly Muslim gangs for being Christians, you know, that that, that was one of the aspects of the hate um, crime, but the police were not willing to pick that up. And there's been, I think they've had sensitivity training um, uh, around the issue of protecting minorities, meaning Islam being a minority and vulnerable, therefore it should be protected. There's no awareness uh, really in British society in general that, that to be a Christian could be um, to be at risk or at, at risk of harm or in a dangerous situation. I had a, a friend who, who was a, a Muslim who became a Christian in the UK and he actually fled to Australia because he didn't feel safe to tell his family that he'd become a Christian. He had to come out this far because he, he found it to be too dangerous there. Well, Mark, I can only say that if it had been a, a, a radical Christian who'd stabbed the Muslim in uh, Speaker's Corner, the papers would be full of it. But there's a, 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 a anti-Christian thing and a, a bending of the knee that uh, suggests that uh, if it goes the other way, it's no news. It's better for everyone if it's not reported. Mark Dury, thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you, Andrew.